G'day, I'm Stephen Travers and I'm largely a self-taught artist and there are lots of benefits and advantages in that. But having created my own online drawing course, I'm also aware of the benefits and advantages of a more systematic, formalised approach to learning drawing. And we can be self-taught for many reasons, both ones that we choose deliberately and others where that really was the only option open to us. But for whatever reason, we're charting our own drawing development program. There are advantages and disadvantages. So how can we take full benefit of the advantages and either minimize the disadvantages or totally overcome them? So let me share with you my thoughts about ways we can all benefit if we're on a self-taught course. And if you're not able to make it through all of the points, just flick to the end because there's a really helpful and important summary, which I think brings all the points together in a really good generalized way. I think a helpful starting point is a summary of some of the advantages of a formal course because that alerts us to some of the things we may want to be compensating for in our self-taught development. Firstly, of course, we have the experience of the course creators and the teachers. We don't know what we don't know we don't know. And so there can be helpful input that we don't even realize would be helpful for us to go and look for. A course should bring a consistent direction in the skills and ideas it brings to us. A course can be great for helping us to be regular in our drawing, either because we've paid for lessons that are in a certain location at a set time, or whether it's an online course where our viewing may be linked to a certain time period. And of course, a good course will step us through the material in some sort of systematic way, which makes it easier for us to understand and to grow in our actual drawing practice. There's often some means of teacher feedback for the drawings that we're producing as part of that course. Of course, there are also advantages in the self-taught journey. The most obvious is there's great flexibility in what we do and how we do it, which can be the one thing that makes it even possible to consider if I'm at a stage in life where life is very busy and I'm pulled in lots of different directions all the time. I can totally tailor make what I do for my ability level, for my experience level, and for the time I have available. So how can I minimize the disadvantages? How can I overcome the losses? But how can I also take full advantages of the benefits of being a self-taught artist so that I can fast track my growth? But these points I'm about to share with you are about how to get the greatest benefit to our drawing, learning, and development for the time we have to put into it. The key thing is to have some sense of where I want to finish up with my drawing, have some sense of the sort of drawings I want to make, of the sorts of materials I want to use, have some awareness of the sort of art that inspires me. Because these are important factors that can help me make the sorts of choices that need to be made in many of the points we're going to talk about. So my first point is have a set time to draw and not just a starting time, but also an end time. Some of my best drawing session experiences came in the second half of a two hour session. Drawings that if I hadn't persevered for the whole length of time I'd set aside to draw them, I could easily have given up in the first five minutes, 10 minutes. In fact, often mistakes or things that haven't quite gone to plan look really bad at the start. And if I don't have some sort of discipline to persevere through that, then I can stop drawing every session just before I have some significant learning breakthrough. So have a set time and stick to it. Not every session time has to be the same. In fact, I recommend it's helpful to have some short ones and some long ones, but have some long ones and stay at the drawing or stay at drawing for the full length of time. My next point is know what you're going to do before you sit down for a drawing session. A good teacher doesn't arrive in class thinking, what will I do now? And then take half the time available to work out what will be done and get organized to do it. So if I'm self-teaching, I don't want to do that either. I need to have a place already set up. I need to have my materials there. And that includes not just my pens or pencil, but my reference material as well, or the video that I'm going to watch. Lesson preparation is not part of the lesson. And this next point flows on from that one. Have a particular focus for that time. And of course, as a self-taught artist, I get to choose the focus which I think is going to be helpful at that point in my development. Here are some ideas. 
I want to work on drawing foliage because I can see that my foliage kind of looks strange. I'm going to pay particular attention to perspective in this lesson or foreshortening. I thought the drawing I did last time did have some obvious problems so I'm going to actually redraw that drawing working to overcome those issues and see if I can't do something I'm happier with this time. This drawing I want to somehow go beyond line work and capture an effect such as say the effect of distance. It could be I'm getting too preoccupied with having things look exact and my line work's becoming very tight and awkward looking. I want to try drawing faster with a more gestural approach. Or it may be, look I think in this next lesson I actually won't pick up a pen at all. I want to think about composition so I'm going to gather a whole lot of drawings that I think work really well or photos for that matter and work out why I think the composition is so compelling. This next point is, if at all possible, having planned drawing sessions, if you miss them, make them up. Because otherwise it's often the thin edge of the wedge. And if we get into a routine of too easily planning to draw and then not, it can become discouraging. We need to remind ourselves that if I really want to do this, it will take time and effort, as if I were doing a course. The artists whose work we admire will have certainly put far more work and time into their drawing than is obvious to an outsider. This next point is be really controlled just how much online teaching video material you use. The good news is there's so much material available and the bad news is that there's so much material available. And unfortunately a lot of that material is more based on trying to keep you online than actually teaching you the skills you need to learn to draw, time spent watching videos can often be time better spent drawing. You should be spending a lot more time actually drawing than you are spending watching how to draw videos. We mustn't fall into the really common mistake of thinking that somehow if I've watched a how to draw video in itself that has improved my drawing. No, that only happens when I incorporate that learning into my actual drawing and that can't happen until I put pen to paper and this next point flows very directly from that one and that's to choose very carefully what teaching input I use. Firstly, not all how to draw videos are equal in value. Not everyone, even if they're very good at art, is necessarily a good teacher but possibly the more important reason than that is that not all videos are compatible with each other because every artist has their own aim in their drawings, their own techniques, their own values, their own drawing styles, their own approaches and it's not necessarily mix and match with all of those factors with different artists, different teachers. It's not that one's better than any other but they're all going to a different place. An obvious example is an artist whose work and whose thinking heads towards a realism style is going to teach in a very different way and have you do very different things than someone whose work ends up in total abstraction. So not every teacher is going to be heading where I want to go and one way you can help work that out is to check the art of the teacher. Most online drawing teachers do produce art themselves although it's not necessary to be an expert in the field to be a good teacher in the field. And if their work looks like it's the sort of work you imagine yourself doing or would like to do, then their teaching videos may be a good match for you. My next point is choose teaching videos that teach you how to think when you draw, not ones that tell you what to do. Because a good teacher will teach you in a way that encourages and leads you to develop your way of drawing your own drawing style to the best place it could possibly be. And poor teaching will have your drawings all look like the teacher's drawings because they've really just led you to copy what they do. The teaching hasn't helped me how to think so that I can apply that teaching to my style rather than have to adopt someone else's style by just copying the marks they make. And that's why I think draw this picture this way step by step line by line is not a helpful way to learn to draw it's a helpful way to end up with a drawing the same as the drawing of the instructor at the start but it will not teach me how to draw an original drawing myself it's that thinking process of how we translate a drawing 
from a scene or a photo onto paper, which is the vital creative part of the whole thing. And that's the most important part to develop in our mind and learning to think of possibilities, to use our line, our tone, our color, whatever we're drawing with, to express that in the way that I want to express that. This next point is choose videos, choose teaching material, could be a book, but choose teaching material that's appropriate for your level of experience. How will you know if material is appropriate? Because when you watch it, you will be encouraged in your art. It will make you want to draw more. It will cause you to think, I can do that, because you will be able to do it. It connects with things you already know. Whereas if you're watching material and at the end of it, you're still not sure what to do, it doesn't seem to make sense with other things you've watched. Or you generally feel discouraged that you can't do what you need to do to become a drawer, then it's clearly the wrong material for you. And I'm not saying that's a fault with the material or with where you're at, it's just that it's not a good match. And when the material is suited for you, you will see your work grow. You'll see your enthusiasm to draw grow. And you'll see the sorts of topics and techniques that you try successfully grow as well. This next point is one that you might be tempted to skip, but it's really important. And that's to make sure you critique your work. And by critique, I mean mark it, evaluate it, give yourself some feedback. This is one of the important things that a teacher should do with work from their students. But of course, if I'm my own teacher, then I need to give myself some feedback. And while it can be a little bit challenging, it really is a series of skills that we can learn. I do have some videos on how to critique your own work, so look out for those. And critiquing our work, learning to see the things that haven't worked as well as they should or as well as we would have liked them is important because if I accept things that aren't right in my work, then I will never grow past that point with them. In fact, if I'm happy to leave problems in my work consistently enough, I'll stop seeing them as problems. And at worst, I'll actually shift my sense of reality so that my wrong lines start to look correct because I've become so used to seeing them look like that in my work. If we tolerate lines that aren't right, we can't move past having those wrong lines in our drawings. Develop a critiquing rhythm, in fact. It may be after every drawing or after every significant drawing and you think, what was I trying to do? Have I succeeded? What am I pleased about? What am I discouraged about? It's not about being critical of myself. It's about finding the places I will most productively focus my energy and time and effort into in the future. This next point might sound odd, but don't try and start at the end. Enthusiasm can be our best friend and our worst enemy when we're wanting to learn a skill. We can get so excited at the creative energy and ideas that we have within us, but it can cause us to run ahead of ourselves. In my field of drawing architectural landscapes, I often see works by people who've drawn something which is clearly just far beyond their ability to draw at that point. And the truth is it would have been far more helpful for their drawing development to have chosen something appropriate for their drawing skill level. The next point flows on from the last one and it's a simple subject drawn really well is both a greater achievement and teaches us more than a complex subject drawn badly. I'm not saying we shouldn't push ourselves at time. That can be a very helpful thing to do, to deliberately choose to step out of our comfort zone. But if I consistently draw subjects that are beyond my ability to draw well, I will become very practiced at drawing them badly and I will reach the stage which I mentioned in the last point where I stop even seeing the things that aren't right because I'm so used to seeing them wrong that it feels normal to me in my drawings and that's the first problem with this or well, the other problem is simply that I become discouraged and that I end up thinking I can't do this I can't learn this I don't have enough talent whatever that is and yet if someone were learning to play the piano, we would never expect them to be given a Beethoven concerto as the first piece. But somehow we think with drawing that we should be able to step into a very complex scene and do a good job simply because we have natural talent. So when we plan what we do 
in our self-taught drawing program. We need to be realistic with our understanding and our ability and choose things as our subjects that we have a good chance of drawing well because that's how we learn the skills that we want to learn, not to learn and have practice at drawing badly. This next point is probably more relevant if in your drawing or your art you're aiming for some measure of realism. If that's the case, find someone who you can take your drawings to and ask them, does this look right? You're not asking them to critique your technique or your line work. You're not asking them for compliments. Make sure they understand that. You don't want a single word of praise from them because that will just distract them from what you're asking them to do, which is to tell you any part of your drawing that doesn't look right. They don't have to understand perspective or to know why something doesn't look right. To think this side of the building just doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't seem to connect with the rest of the picture. It's asking them for their fresh set of eyes to look at something which they haven't been looking at already for two hours while it was being created and perhaps getting used to things that aren't quite right. So a fresh set of eyes is invaluable. You, they won't need to study it for hours. At a glance, they will tell that something in this scene isn't looking right. And then that gives you something to target so that in future it will look right. It won't be a point of awkwardness that attracts attention. And here's that final point I mentioned at the start that I think really summarizes and brings together the essence of everything I've said. And that's excellence in any field. It doesn't just happen and it doesn't happen by accident. It happens through planning and through intent. I have to work out where I'm going to go and the best way to get there. And I have to be resolved then to work through that and to put the work and the effort and the time and the consistency in to get to that place. If that's a place I truly do want to get to. And our lives often do have different seasons for different things. But if this is a season for drawing, at least to some degree, then even though I may be self-taught in that process, I still need to do it with planning and intent. So I wish you well with that and hope this video has been helpful in your doing that. I'm Stephen Travers. See you next time.